Ooh, look at that. Hi guys, we are ready for the next part. So you should have now some fins, maybe some baby fish if you want to add some baby fish. And we're at this point going to be adding a little bit more to the base of the fins to give the fins a little bit of depth, um, but not bringing it out really at all. And then we are also going to be doing the body. This is going to be the first layer of the body. This layer is going to not be visible because it is um, underneath these paint layers that we're going to be making. And we're also going to be adding some more baby fish. And we're even going to see if we can add maybe the tops of these baby fishes. Very, very faint, but it's going to add a little bit of a 3D effect. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright you guys, so we have our reference image here. And we have a little bit of a base outline right here of where this fish is going to be. If you don't have an outline, just use your reference image or um, look or you know kind of trace out where you think the body is going to be but the very first step that we're going to do is it's going to be very difficult to paint scales on this without adding anything for the paint to glide on so if we started doing little scales and we tried to blend i can guarantee you our paintbrush is going to just wipe the paint off this glass like material so what i would recommend is your very first step being to create a light background of paint this is going to help the paint to actually stick because if it's trying to stick to glass it's going to wipe off but if it's trying to stick to uh, paint it's going to stay a little bit better so i'm just loading up my brush now with a bit of paint i'm using copper and orange mixed together i'm going to kind of make a slightly darker background because i want the scales to be um, a little bit of like a shining bright light on here so we're going to do yeah, that's probably a good color for our background. Let me just darken that up just a little bit more. And this paint does have a bit of a shimmer to it, which is something that I personally prefer, but you do not have to if you do not want to. And that is just from the metallic shade of copper, which honestly, it's not very metallic, it's more of a glitter. Now one thing I will say is we are starting to, this is the first layer that is going to start to have a 3D effect because it is now two layers of paint. Because of this, as you're painting, you're going to see that this, from your angle, is covering, it's almost touching this fin, isn't it? From your angle right now, this fin is touching this paint. I'm going to turn this. Is this fin touching the paint anymore? No, it's not. It's not touching the paint anymore. Um, that is so because of that, you're gonna actually want to turn this multiple angles as you're painting. Okay, let me go ahead and get this at a good angle that you can see. It's focusing right now. Sorry. One more time. There it goes. So as you're painting, you want to go ahead and keep turning it to make sure. You're covering all your angles and you're not going to get any random, obviously floating bits of paint. You want to turn your head and look underneath to make sure you're making your fish fat enough that you can't see where it's not connecting, where the fins aren't connecting. Turn that again. And now I need to make it super fat on this side so it connects again. So really the big thing is you do want to be um, making a making it so it looks good from all angles not good from just one angle see now this fin is going to be very hard to connect i have to make this quite a bit wider right here and then another good reason we're adding a bit of a base to the tail is that's going to help to hide that the tail is not connected I'm just going to work on smoothing this out so I'm not working with these harsh lines, harsh paint lines. Now, again, I haven't turned it in a second, so that means it's going to look strange from another angle, I can guarantee you. Continue to turn it, make sure you're looking at it from all angles. And I don't want any of these harsh chunks of paint so I'm just working the paint around trying to soften those 
I know we're going to be painting on top of it, but we still don't want any weird textures. It just makes it hard to paint on top of it that way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some paint with just a clean paintbrush, but oh, as I thought, it's going to start erasing. This is why it's very, very hard to, hold on, let me focus again. This is why it's very, very hard to paint on resin, is it will, um, as you try to blend, as you try to soften, things like that, you're just going to end up starting to erase what you've put down, but thankfully it's not erasing too much, it's just removing a little bit of paint. And its mouth comes out just like a little bit, it's got a soft nose, isn't that? You see the soft nose? I'm going to soften that nose. Just like that. The middle doesn't matter too much because we're going to be doing so many layers of paint on top of it, but at this point I would start painting the entire body how you want it because then you just copy that pattern all the way up and it's going to give you practice so you're not going to mess up on the very last layer, which is something I might do um, and I'm very worried about. So I'm just going to be working on this layer and practicing until I like it before I cover it with resin, even though you're not going to see this layer completely from the top, but it's going to help me. I'm going to like that. I'm going to keep it like that. The edges aren't very soft, but I'm just going to smooth those out just a little bit. But as for the center, that's a pretty good background for us to start with. So I'm going to soften this edge. Too much water. There we go. This glitter, it's kind of hard for you to see because of, um, you know, I am using a very, very nice DSLR camera and a very nice lens right now, but it is still very hard to translate micro fine glitter pieces. Um, and I'm sure they're even more prominent than I even see because I'm not wearing my glasses while I paint this. Um, one thing I do want to really blend out is the tail because I want it to really soften so you don't see it merging into the layer underneath it. Just like this. I'm going to turn this, make sure, I'm actually casting a little bit of shadow on my previous layer which is totally okay, I'm not bothered by that, but we do want to make sure it's not a very obvious shadow so that's why I am really softening this. I'm going to grab a little bit of toilet paper, not toilet paper, a uh, paper towel and wipe that off. It's so actually, the time that I'm recording this is during an event where it is joked about that there is no toilet paper left. Um, but I can't say what that event is because they're demonetizing any videos that mention it. Um, but I'm just going to work that and soften that up and I just need a little bit more paint, a little bit more pigment. I'm going to work it a little bit orangey towards the tip because I want it to blend in. This is very orangey on that background color, that previous layer. I'm just going to work some orange. I'm not basing the color scheme right now off of our reference. So hopefully that dries with enough paint there for me to paint on top of it, you know? You work some brown onto that. I am going to do, I think, a cow pattern where it's got um, white and orange. So. That's kind of the scheme that I'm going for. I'm going to soften the other edges with a little bit of water. And just erase that a little bit. We do want a lot of things to be soft during paintings like this. But we are starting to work more into uh, the realm of um, not as transparent, more opaque, because our fish's body is not going to be transparent. Its uh, fins are going to be slightly tra transparent, but its body is not. It'd be cool if someone did like an underwater, like really deep sea fish where they are almost transparent. That would be quite cool, where you just did almost an impression. But I'm afraid to do that just because I'm not sure 
how good I am um, and making it not just look like a mistake. All right, I'm just gonna soften this edge as well. All right, so now that we've done that, I wanna go ahead and start adding the top layer to these orange fish right here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm grabbing some orange paint. I'm gonna see if this works, if it doesn't, doesn't. But I'm gonna see the tops of these, especially these large fish, right? Let me see if I can focus. Right now that we've focused that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of orange on top of these fish to add a slight 3D effect to them. So it now looks like that fish is popping up a little bit. I have to turn it to make sure there isn't any weird edges, which I just saw one. Just like that. So I'm going to do that on the large fish. Oops, that one's not even connected if I turn it. Again, you have to be turning these to make sure they are connected. And I'm going to soften these as well. I'm only going to do it on the large fish because on the small fish, it just does not connect if I'm turning the bowl. All right, now that I've turned the bowl and I'm looking and I'm liking the angle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soften those. It is difficult because if you look at specific angles, you see this ball right here, if you look at it at weird angles, you could definitely tell that's not connected to the fish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna soften these and almost make them slightly transparent. That way it's not as apparent they are a good few centimeters above the fish. And it's more like a slight impression of depth. Just like that. Again, we have to be turning the bowl so much at this point. There are actually really good, there are actually really good pieces of resin art out there that don't attempt the 3D effect as much as others, and that's fine. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go for a 3D effect. So even if your fish is not that 3D, don't worry too much about it. It's still completely art, it's still a painting, and it probably photographs really good and really 3D at certain angles, which is okay. See, that's looking really nice. I like that. It's just like slight impressions of thickness. You see how that just added so much depth to those fish? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple more baby fish swimming around, so we're going to have a couple different depths to the baby fish, you know? So I'm just mixing a little bit of orange paint, might be a little bit too watery. And I'm going to add a baby fish here, can't see that, let me see, how is that, yeah. I'm going to add these ones a little bit bigger. Just like that, there's one baby fish, and let's add a baby fish, um, let me see, here, can you see that, yeah you can, uh, ta the tail got a bit fat there, I'm just going to work that. That's going to be a shaky baby fish because of the coffee that I'm on right now. Alright, that's looking pretty good. I want to add maybe one more at this depth, which I think I'll put right here. And I'll have it be about that big. See, that's quite nice, those three little fish right there. That added quite a bit of depth, just adding a little bit of fish. Actually, I'm going to add one small fish right there, because that's 
How about right here and there? Because those are quite empty spaces. But it's going to be small. This one's just going to be itty bitty. Just like that. And this one's going to be small too. Itty bitty. Just a baby fish. Cute. Alright. Now that I've added that, I'm just going to check. This is dry. At this, oh, no. No, it's not. It's not dry quite yet. So we're just going to wait another minute for this to dry. Alright guys, now that this is pretty much dry, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding scales and some details. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on other aspects. We're going to do the eyes at uh, this time as well, just like a little impression of them. But what we're going to be focusing on is really starting out this painting and getting into where things are going to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pattern down of where I want my white scales to go. And scales are going to be a little bit of an impression of them at this point until we get them the way that I want them to get them and I assume it's going to take me a while to get them there. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting some color down where I want my pattern to go. So I'm thinking I'm going to do some orange scales right there. Oops, my breath is moving my fish. And I'm also going to put some orange scales, sorry, right there. Let me just move that out of the way. Orange scales right there. And let's say I'm going to add a slight impression there and a slight impression there. Alright, so that's going to be the white part of my fish. And now I'm going to add where the orange parts are going to be. So at this point I'm mixing bright orange and yellow together. Or I should say gold. Gold and orange. To get a bright color scheme going on. And I'm going to work the rest. It's going to be orange. This layer and the fin layer is probably going to take you the longest because they're going to be the largest. <laughs> and the fish is going to slowly get slender and slender as we get towards the dorsal fin of it, the top fin. Because that, if, if you cut a fish horizontally, the top part is going to be the thinnest part, isn't it? So that's the part that's going to be um, the quickest to paint because it's very small. If you notice, these two layers and most of my sped up paintings take very long and then the rest of the painting each layer takes about two minutes to paint after that quite quick all right so i've got that and it's going to start drying and that's quite a nice pattern for this guy here i think i am going to wait for this to completely dry before i start actually doing any details and blending on him um there is a little bit more of an impression of the tail which I'm liking so I'm going to try to pull that out a little bit because I want these to stick out slightly but I don't want it to be very obvious that they're casting a shadow on the tail but I do want to create the tail into a more three-dimensional I don't want it all to be all on one layer but that's literally as much as the tail is I'm going to paint is pretty much just right there and even that I'm going to blend out slightly using a little bit of water just like that that's about as much for that in that I'm gonna do um, I'm now gonna wait for this to dry before I go ahead and paint the uh, baby fish so now that that is um, the baby fish at this point are kind of I think they're dry I hope they're dry because I'm gonna add eyes to them this time I'm using almost a greenish brown in hopes that the eyes aren't gonna be little black dots which already I can tell is not going to work because you couldn't even barely see that dot. 
I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out exactly how dark these eyes need to be because I do not like them black, but I definitely want to see them. How does that look? Does that look good on camera? Um, visible, isn't it? Um, so we're going to go ahead and pop eyes on our baby fish and I might still do a little bit of orange on top of the eyes because it does create a slight um, hooded effect doesn't it if it's got little eyes or little eye hoods I should say um, oops, that one is not dry for sure but this one is oop. those are some big eyes on that fish specifically um, but that is looking quite quite good I think um, uh, I forgot eyes on this little fish as well uh, they need to be darker than that well that one wasn't dry either but we're just gonna wait a second and we're going to go ahead and fill those in a little bit better than what I've done right now that'll be fine um, so now that this one is starting to dry we can blend it out a little bit with a little bit of water but you will start to see this white outline outside your fish um, if I turn this you can actually see it glistening this white outline which is fine because again that's when paint dries uh, you see it but it does go transparent once we actually put the resin over it so it, it, it just takes a little bit of a learning curve to see what is going to dry clear and what's not going to dry clear. I'm going to add um, little fins on our baby fish at this point which will be just like that. Add a little bit more to that tail. I think I could add a little bit of texture to these ones because they are so big that they can uh, withhold a little bit of detail on them. But you wouldn't really add any details to the extra small fish. That wouldn't be necessary. I think that is the ticket right right there. Alright, this one is hilariously bug-eyed, but we're going to wait for that paint to dry before we add lids to those eyes. And we're just going to wait also for this guy to dry. It's still got a little bit of time left um, before we add some more details. We're also going to wait for this to dry as well before we add details to him because he's more than large enough to withhold a little bit of detail. Alright, we are still waiting for this guy to dry. He's taken a little while. So in the meantime, I'm going to add a little bit of details to him. He is a little wet near his fins right here, but I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Um, it's going to bleed a little bit there, but it's okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of detail to him. Um, not a lot because he is still very small, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an impression of texture by adding some different coloring to him um, on the side here. That's a little dark, but I'm just going to dot that and then blend those out. And I'm also going to add some white, or I should say silver. There we go. And blend that out right on top of the eyes as well. That'll be, that'll be slightly nice. I don't want a lot of uh, detail on him, just, just a little impression of it. So at this point I'm going to start wiping up the paint and blending it out. And really making it so it doesn't look like little dots that I added, but a little bit of texture instead. So I'm really just doing almost an up and down, um, oops, there's water drop on the tip of that, up and down motion with my paintbrush. 
really just moving the paint around to add a little bit of a detail to him. I'm going to try to get some of this paint up because it's very wet, just like that. Did erase a little bit on him, unfortunately, but that's okay. I'm going to fill that in with a little bit of orange once that dry- uh, actually I could do it right now because I'll add a really soft effect if I add it while it's wet. I'm just going to drop some orange on those wet bits. Now it looks like this fish has a little bit of detail and a little bit of texture. Not a lot, but just enough. Um, so that's, that's really what I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for this bug-eyed crazy guy right here, as you can see. The very first, first thing that I want to do is I want to drop some orange, almost pure paint on top of these eyes. And that's going to create a lidded effect. Just like that. Now he looks like he's got eyelids. See that? Nice. Um, it is a bit hard to see because of the reflection. It's because I'm painting on, again, it's like a glass surface. So it is a bit hard sometimes. I apologize for that. Um, for him, I'm going to add some copper details. Which is just copper and orange mixed together. And that's going to add a little bit of a glittery effect to him as well. Oops, that's too watery. So I'm going to do that across his body right here. Get some glitter on him. Just like that. And I'm just going to drop a little bit of pigment in little spots and let the water do the blending out for me on this guy. There we go. Let the water blend that out and let the water blend that out for me. So now he's got a little bit of a pattern to him without really trying too hard. And I'm just going to detail out that tail a little bit more. As well as, I don't, oh I added fins to him but they're a little faint. I'm going to make those a little bit less faint. Oh, and that created a little bit of a pattern on his body as well, which is okay. Make those fins a little bit darker, just like that. So I'm liking that fish quite a bit more um, now that he's got a little bit of texture on him. Um, I'm thinking about adding that to all the large fish that I'm starting to create. But at this point, we're still, let's see if we're still waiting. We're shockingly still waiting on this guy to be dry, so it'll just be another minute before we start adding more details to him. Okay, let's go ahead and start adding details to this guy right here. Um, one thing I'm going to do that with is I'm going to go ahead and add the impression of scales. So I'm going to grab a darker color and my super small brush, and I'm going to go ahead and create the impression here as I go across. So scales are not, ooh, that might need a little bit more color to it. The scales on a fish of this size, if you look at the reference photo, they are not large, so don't be creating massive um, scales. It's not going to be realistic. So at this point, you do want to reference your um, photo to make sure that you're making something that is in real life and not made up in your head. So I'm just going to create these little lines just like that, which is adding impression of scales, very small details, and the more water on my brush, the thicker these lines are getting, so I apologize for that, but I'm not too, too bothered about getting these 100% perfect. This layer is going to be very, very underneath, but you should still spend a lot of time here because you're going to need to practice for the final layers. 
And if you look at a very sideward, sideways angle of your fish, you will see this layer. So this layer is going to be visible. The sides of this layer are, I should say. Um, the middle of this layer is going to be invisible. But we still want to spend our time here really perfecting this. And we're also going to add the eyes kind of where I am right now. And if I'm looking at my reference photo, the eyes almost have this circular um, gouge to them. I don't know. I don't know what word I should use there um, for it, but they do have, um, it's not scales. It's almost like these shadows and then it comes in like this. So it's going to create almost like a pocket of where the eyeballs are going to be. Okay. I'm just going to darken up my color a little bit more here. A little bit more paint. Alright, hopefully this color is not too different than what I've been using. No, it's not bad. Um, but I do want to create an impression here. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. And then drag that color down. This is just going to create a pocket that I can see in later layers of where these eyes should be. Because these eyes are going to jut out a little bit, eyes do have a little bit more depth to them. So when I get up here in layers, I am going to make um, an impression of these eyes sticking out a little bit more using the 3D effect. But at this point, I'm just adding texture and shadow to where those are going to be. The scales over near the head are so small that it almost looks smooth up here. So I'm not going to do very, very deep um, impressions. I'm going to grab some bright orange for that nose and blend that down. That is looking more and more like a textured but kind of smooth background. Um, I'm going to soften where those eyes are going to be. We're going to put black or um, close to black for those areas. Probably more of a brownish color. And we're going to drag that down just like that. And this is where we want to start the scales happening. So I'm going to grab some more color and continue with my scales here. My, there's a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm dropping a lot of paint right now. That's okay. I'm not too bothered by it. Scales, they're not 100% detailed if you're looking at them. They're not going to be shining. You almost only see scales on a fish when the light reflects off the top of them. So, doing this like underneath spot, I'm not too, too bothered if it looks a little bit too circular. But we do, again, want to pay attention for this layer because it is going to be visible, especially along the side, it's going to be visible. All right, I'm going to do the other side here. Just like that. Let me drag that down a little bit. That's looking a little bit like a line there. Perfect. <laughs> And this side right here. And up, just like that, into our more soft area. I'm just gonna blend that in. This is gonna be invisible, but again, you wanna practice painting. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and add the darker gray for the um, scales that are white. So I'm mixing pale yellow, white, silver, and black to get this color. 
All right, I think that's gonna be good. There's a little bit too much paint on, there we go. And I'm gonna do a little bit of silver impression. Like that. And just like that. Oh, I forgot the, this spot right here. All right, now that we've got those tiny little scales in there, we're gonna wait a second for that to dry. It's probably gonna take another 10 minutes like it did before. And then we're gonna add the shiny part of the scale, so the wider, shinier part. And we're gonna do that pretty much above every line we've done here. So it looks like a 3D scale coming down. Okay, so now that we have that pretty much dry, we're just gonna add the shine of the scales on top of each individual scale. So I've got some water, gold, and orange. And I'm gonna put this right on top of every line that I've drawn. Uh, in front of the line, so facing the head. That way it looks like these scales are, you get the U's facing this way um, as you're painting these. We want it to be quite soft, it's looking quite harsh right now, but in a second I'm gonna blend these out. There we go. We want it pigmented enough that it covers the dark, but we don't want it pigmented enough that it looks extremely harsh, like it's looking a little bit like right now. But you can see that's looking more and more like scales. And less and less like little dots or lines. Because we've got two colors. We've got the shine of the scale and we've got the shadow of the scale. So we're going to just dot that down. And then focusing, making sure that it looks really good on the sides because that is what's going to be visible. And working that up. So this shine is going to be the part of the head that also sticks out a little bit, which is going to be the eye area, which is this right here, the lidded area, the nose a little bit, and then a little bit of this body right here. So we're going to go ahead and dot that in a little bit and blend that out just a little bit in the head area. We have a little bit of a highlight up here. None of this is going to be visible, but at least we know where the highlight is going to be just in there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to blend these out. So I'm just going to soften above each one so they're not dots and blend those out just gently. I'm wiping the paint off my brush as I'm grabbing it. And it's also flattening the painting a little bit so I'm not getting these globs of paint sticking out. I'm just going to dot and blend that out manually. There we go. And then blend that out here. So you know that's looking a little bit more like scales, especially in that area. We're going to do the same for the white area. So the white area, I'm going to mix white and silver to get this very shiny platinum. And a little bit of yellow because fish aren't pure white typically. They have a little bit of yellow to them. And that is a very pretty, very pretty color. So I'm gonna add this right on top of my shadows right there. Just like that. And I don't need to blend this as much because it's white blending into white, but I am just going to soften it a little bit. Alright, while that's softening, I'm going to go ahead and draw the eyes for the first time. Uh, ooh, anxiety, because this is going to be a dark color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a brown, a very dark brown, darker than any color that we have on here yet. And you know what, so this contrasts more without having to make it very dark. I'm just going to add a little bit of blue because the opposite of orange is going to be blue. So if I make this a dark brownish blue, 
it's going to stick out even without me making it black. So I'm going to add just a little bit of blue to the background of this color. Nothing else is going to have this shade, so hopefully it's going to stick out quite a bit without having to go dark black here. Alright, so I've got a color. I don't know if this is going to be good, but let's go ahead and check. We can go quite a bit darker with this guy. So let me add a little bit more blue. Okay, so I think I've got the correct color now. Um, yeah, that's pretty gosh darn close to what I'm looking for. Very bluish brown. So I'm just going to dot where I want these eyes to be. Uh, they should have been a little bit farther back, but that's okay. I'm going to just draw them larger backwards. And that's not horrible. This one's a little bit farther forward. I think I might erase that just a little bit. Drag it back just a bit. Um, I'm going to do that. Again, it's so easy, so easy to erase these kinds of paintings, so I'm just going to dab and remove that. It's quite easy. Just like that. And I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. Alright, just like that. In a second, I'm going to grab um, a little bit of paint and do eyelids on this. Actually, what I might, I'm going to try cutting this paint off with a little bit, oof. I don't want to accidentally erase you guys, so doing this, you run the risk of erasing the paint underneath, and then you have to wait for it to dry, which is just a bother. Ooh, it, it, you could tell it erased it just a bit there. Do you see how that has a white spot? But that's okay. And we're going to erase this guy a little bit as well. That one is, wasn't as bad. Alright, and I'm going to grab a little bit of orange. and dollop it right where I want the eyelids to be. And then round those out just a little bit. We're gonna cover these eyes by a lot of paint in the future. The next couple layers are going to be covered in paint, which will make this look not as terrible. But I don't want it to look very terrible while I'm working on it, because it will, um, how should I say, dis, uh, what is that word I'm looking for, dis, uh, oh my gosh, what is that word, ooh, that's going to drive me mental. Um, Oh gosh, what is that word? Um, demotivate, sorry, demotivate me. Alright, so that's looking quite good. I'm liking the sides here. I'm just going to soften these edges a little bit with some water and make sure that I'm liking the baby fish in this layer. And we are going to go ahead and cure this layer in just a second. I know it doesn't look like much, but this is the bottom most shadowy layer that we have so it doesn't even look like that much but again you can work on this layer for quite a while and just practice because um, you'll need the practice for the later layers since those are what are important let me just soften that edge right there 
because nothing has an outline in the real world. Alright, so I'm looking at the baby fish. I'm just going to add a bit of a shine to some of these fish, a little bit of gold shine. Just like that. Add some shine to this guy. Like that. Add a little bit of gold shine to this guy. Again, this is unnecessary if you don't want glitter and glam to your fish. I forgot to add eyelids onto this one, or eyeballs, I should say. Um, but I do like a little bit of a glitz and glam to my fish. That's why I do add a little bit of glitter to them. It, it is very hard to see it in the camera, but if you're looking at it in real life, it does add quite an effect, which I like. This one is missing a bit of paint, so I'm just filling that in. And his eyes are very light, so I'm just going to add a little bit of darkness to those eyes and give this one eyes. Just like that. And I'm looking to see if I want to make any changes. I'm not that bored. Little eyes on this guy. Just like that. And a little bit more orange. For this one. And this one right here. Alright, I'm looking. I'm liking where we are at. So I am going to mix up a little bit of resin. And we are going to cure this bad boy. Actually, I'm going to add just a little bit of orange right there. And there, so he's got little knuckles. Yep, that looks nice. Alright, make sure you turn it. Check all the angles. Make sure nothing is floating, which I just saw something floating right there. Again, every time you want to erase, just add a little bit of water. Oh, that created a nice effect right there. Turn it. Make sure all the angles are looking good. I turn all my paintings quite a bit while I'm working on them. Make sure there's no harsh lines, where you don't want any harsh lines. Just like that. And that fin is a little bit too light. Cool. That is looking quite nice, and I think that I can go ahead and... Oof. If you don't stop, you'll never stop. I think I can go ahead and cure this guy. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to mix up some resin. I don't think I'm going to mix up as much as I did last time. I think I'll do two capfuls. I think that will be enough. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cast this layer. And this time I only did two capfuls. I hope you guys don't mind that I'm going to mix the resin off camera. Uh, in part two, I mixed it on camera so you can see. And in part one, I really got into depth on how you can see um, when the resin is completely mixed and you are ready to pour it. Since if you pour it too early, you're going to have quite a bit of issues. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and move the resin to coat the entire thing. You don't want to move it too much at this point um, because you can get the paint moving as well, which is, we really don't want that. Alright, so now that is completely coated. And don't worry too much about this guy. Um, I'm thinking in the next layer we're going to brighten him up a little bit so he's not quite as dark. But this is a great background, that dark background that we can follow and it's going to create even more depth 
as we get higher up and a little bit brighter as well. I'm loving these baby fish quite a bit and I'm excited to add more. Now these ones from the very first layer that we did, you can obviously tell they're very deep in the painting and you can al already see that the tail is very deep in the painting as well. We also have a very dark shadow now being cast by, oops, let me see if I can show you. We have a very dark shadow being cast by the fish right there. You can see. I do have a lot of different lights pointed at it, so you're not going to see as much of the shadow. Um, if I were to turn off the light, which let me see if I can go ahead and do light on. Let's see if that's going to adjust. Do you see the shadows moving though? There we go. So again, it's not very hard to add a 3D effect to these guys, because physics will do it for you. <laughs> but now that we have that in, we're going to go ahead and wait. Ooh, look at that. We're just going to wait for this to cure, and I'll see you guys for the next layer, for day uh, four. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.